you'll have some sequence problems and series problems in the SAT and PSAT math. And you'll never see the word series in the problems. When they give you problems on the series, instead of using that word series, they just ask you what the sum of the sequence will be. They just explain the terms. I personally haven't seen any problem where you must know the formulas for the arithmetic series or the geometric series. You can pretty much calculate these series without using these formulas. However, you must memorize the formulas for the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence. Before we begin, let me explain what the sequence is and what the series is. A sequence of numbers is an array of numbers separated by commas. Therefore, a sequence of numbers could be any random numbers separated by commas. And if there is any pattern to the sequence, we can predict what the following numbers in the sequence will be. Well, this kind of sequence where a certain pattern is exhibited is what we'll be dealing with in the SAT and the PSAT math. First, let me show you here one example. Well, what is the pattern here? The first term is 3, and you add 2 to the previous terms to get the following terms. Uh, how about this one? Well, the first term is 1, and you multiply 3 to the previous terms to get the following terms. How about this one? The first term is 2, and you double that number and add 1 to that, you get 5. And you keep doing the same thing. Double the preceding numbers and add 1 to that to get the following terms. And that is the pattern here. How about this guy? Well, there is no system to generate this one. The pattern here is simply 5, 3, negative 1, these three numbers repeat. So we're going to solve some sequence problems where any pattern is observed, such as these uh, examples. Now the series is just the uh, sum of the sequence. As I mentioned, I'll only go over formulas for the two types of sequence. First, arithmetic sequence. Let's say that the first term is a. If you add a common difference d to that first term a, you get the second term. For the third term, you add another d to the second term. For the fourth term, you add another d to the third term, and so on. Well, to be able to see the pattern more clearly, let's express this a sub 1 with a plus 0d, and a sub 2 with a plus 1d then when this is 1, this is 0. When it's 2, this is 1. When it's 3, this is 2. When it's 4, this is 3. Now you see the pattern, right? The nth term, a sub n, is going to be a plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. Now geometric sequence. Let's say that the first term is a. If you multiply a common multiplier r to that first term, a, you get the second term. For the third term, you multiply another r to the second term. And for the fourth term, you multiply another r to the third term, and so on. To be able to see the pattern more clearly, in this case also, let's express this a sub 1 with a times r to the 0 power, and a sub 2 with a times r to the 1 power. Then you can see that when this is 1, this is 0. When it's 2, this is 1. When it's 3, this is 2. When it's 4, this is 3. Now you see the pattern again. The nth term, a sub n, is going to be a times r to the n minus 1 power. Well, having these two sequence formulas under the belt, now you're ready to solve some problems. Let's begin. 